So Dr. Mesa, this is your specialty. You're dedicated to this um, and helping your patients. For people who are new, new to this, whether it's ETPV and or MF, how do you describe to people what they're dealing with? So the myeloproliferative neoplasms, one that, you know, it's a, it's a big word to chew. You know, what are these? The bone marrow is the source of your blood. Your blood is about half cells and half water. And most of those are red blood cells that carry oxygen from your lungs to the rest of your body. There's white blood cells that fight infections, platelets that cause the blood to clot. All three of these cells are like branches from the same tree. They all grow from the similar group of cells that are called stem cells. Now, the diseases of the bone marrow tend to occur when something that changes in the genes that control those stem cells goes has, has a problem, a mutation or something of that nature. There are dozens of diseases of the bone marrow. The myeloproliferative neoplasms are, are just a subset of that. They are a group of what we refer to as chronic leukemias. Chronic meaning they might grow very slowly. Uh, and leukemia, again, being diseases of the bone marrow that are related with these genetic changes. Now, when we speak of myeloproliferative neoplasms or MPNs, we primarily are talking about three different diseases. Two of them that tend to occur uh, have a much slower time course. They are diseases that are associated with an increase in blood counts and represent about three to 400,000 patients in the United States. The first is central thrombocythemia, or that people refer to as ET. It's characterized by an increase in platelets and a risk of the blood clotting inappropriately, leading to a blood clot or to bleeding. Patients sometimes can have an increase in the white blood cell count. They can have symptoms. They sometimes can have uh, enlargement of the spleen, a filter for the blood under the rib cage. People frequently will find this because the blood counts were elevated at either the time that they had a blood clot or just with a routine physical. You know, they came in, they had a routine physical, the platelets were high, or they had a pre-pregnancy evaluation or, or anything like that. Uh, the sister disease of that is polycythemia vera. Very similar, but the red blood cells are increased. And then there, there can be a increase in the platelets or again in the spleen. Again, a risk of blood clots or bleeding. Again, the potential of symptoms such as headaches, night sweats, or fatigue. Now these diseases are chronic diseases. Many people might live out their normal lifespan. We treat them with aspirin. We treat them to try to decrease the risk of blood clots or bleeding. With P. Vera, we control the red blood cell count through a process called phlebotomy. And then in both groups, if people have a higher risk of blood clots, bleeding, or having symptoms, or are older, we will use medicines to try to control the blood counts, such as hydroxyurea, uh, an oral pill, a long-acting interferon, such as ropegylated interferon, or even a JAK inhibitor called ruxolidinin. Because these diseases share some molecular changes one can be in a gene called the JAK2, that is an on-off switch for the blood stuck in the on position, or they may have mutations in other uh, genetic changes such as calreticulin or MPL. Now, both of these diseases can progress into a disease called myelofibrosis. Myelofibrosis, patients can have a big spleen, they might have anemia, they might have difficult symptoms such as weight loss, fatigue or spleen symptoms, and myelofibrosis can be life-threatening. Patients with myelofibrosis might start there, it's about 30,000 patients in the US, or they might have progressed from ET or PV patients that have those diseases for 10 years or more. Myelofibrosis is a disease that when we consider treatment, we either consider a very aggressive treatment such as bone marrow or stem cell transplantation, that can cure the disease. It's a very complicated therapy, which is why we don't do it for all. Or medicines, of which at the current time we have approved medicines 
that are inhibitors of that protein JAK2. Ruxolitinib now approved for about 10 years and fedratinib for about two years. Many new drugs are in development for all of these diseases. A lot of room for hope. They're important diseases and uh, a lot of resources out there for individuals that face them. So thank you, Dr. Mesa. That was incredible the way you covered everything. I look forward to our next conversation. Hopefully by then there will be so many more drugs in the pipeline. <laughs> Fabulous. Thank you so much for having me. And for everyone who wants to see Dr. Mesa's full conversation, just head to thepatientstory.com where you'll find human answers to your cancer questions.